Shining 3D just released the Einstar Vega, so let's scan some cars and car parts. A few weeks back, I did a video covering a year's worth of projects and parts that I use scan data from my Shining 3D Einstar as one of the main parts of the design process. And I think one of the takeaways from that is that if you do similar parts, this is a really fantastic piece of hardware, but it does struggle on really small parts. And if you're gonna do something large, like a car body, you really need to pay a particular attention to how you structure your project and the settings within that project. Shining 3D happened to catch that video and they reached out to see if I'd be interested in testing and reviewing a new piece of hardware. They didn't disclose what that hardware was gonna be. And I think like many others, when I heard they were coming out with a new product, we were all thinking, sweet, Freaking laser beam. So I was admittedly a little bit disappointed when I found out that it was an all-in-one, but based on the performance of the Einstar, I figured, hey, I'll still give it a shot, and I'm under no obligation to actually like this thing, so let's see whether this is any better than this. We're not gonna waste any time with an unboxing video. We're just gonna get straight into the only two things in the box that matter. That's the scanner itself and this tripod handle that it comes with as well. In addition to being a tripod, which will be handy for using a turntable and scanning smaller objects, it is fully adjustable so that you can have a much more ergonomic grip depending on what you're trying to scan. The scanner interface is actually really intuitive with the touchscreen. You can quickly select whatever mode you want. There's two different modes, one HD mode, which is designed to scan really small objects. Uh, think of something that fits in the palm of your hand. And then fast mode, which is designed to scan larger objects, such as a car body or something of that nature. So let's jump right into what I thought was gonna be a really difficult scan, and that's scanning the entire body of my BMW i8 in one shot. Prep work for the scan was really quite minimal. All I did was do a pretty poor job of applying a sub scan spray to any of the gloss black surfaces and glass on the car. I did not use any sort of markers or additional tracking aids. I really wanted to create a worst case scenario to see how the scanner would do. There's actually very few settings you have to worry about changing once you get into scanning. You can select whether you use markers or texture for alignment. You can adjust the brightness and you can also select whether you want to view the data indicator or view the texture as it's scanning. There are two modes, as I said. The fast mode allows you to also adjust the depth of field, which is the range in which the scanner is going to pick up data. So you can adjust that to be fairly close or fairly far away. I kept it to the full range when I was doing the car body to have the greatest depth of field. Being an all-in-one, one of the first convenience aspects I noticed was being able to freely walk around the car without having to reposition a laptop or move cables around. You can see from the screen that the field of view is really quite large and this goes a long way in helping tracking. It keeps a large number of unique features in view at all times and mostly eliminates the need for any sort of markers. I did do a pretty poor job of applying the scan spray, so we are gonna have some gaps and voids, and I didn't spray the rocker panels either. And we've got a nearly complete scan of the car. The scanner didn't crash. It did pretty well with tracking, I think thanks primarily to the large field of view. When I tried to scan my i8 previously with the Einstar, it would really lose tracking around the doors where it was flat and I didn't use any markers. So this scan was done with zero markers outdoors, which is pretty impressive in itself. It's not perfect. You can see when we did the full wrap around, we have some overlap by, if I had to guess, probably two or three inches. So I think for a first attempt at scanning a full car with a standalone device and no laptop, I am reasonably impressed so far. This whole scan took 20 minutes. And to do that whole scan, we used about 25% of the battery, actually a little bit more. But we're going to go and attempt to mesh a full car scan on this thing. 
we're going to go the highest resolution that this will allow to use on the device and that's at 2.5 millimeters which is perfectly fine for the scale of a complete car go middle of the road mesh optimization go preview and we are at 9:49 a.m and we'll see how long this thing takes to mesh so fast forward at 95 percent we're at 954 this is incredibly impressive because this would have taken about three hours on my laptop. So for 20 minutes outside with no real prep work other than a little bit of spray, this is looking pretty promising. Let's get this thing onto the laptop and get some better video capture. Unlike the Einstar, you're not able to set the point cloud resolution at the start of the project. You just start scanning and it's gonna generate the point cloud. And I noticed that it will automatically adjust the resolution based on how big the point cloud is. If you're scanning a smaller part like the oil filter adapter that we'll see, then it's going to limit the max resolution to about 0.63 millimeters. And on the car body, it was limiting the resolution to about 2.5 millimeters, which is perfectly fine on something that big. That's more than enough resolution on the car to get a reasonable fitment for like a body kit or something like that. But that's not the absolute resolution that the scanner is capable of. If you plug it into a laptop, there's a new meshing software that they allow you to post-process the things on a laptop, and that's gonna allow you to go as far as a 0.5 millimeter scan resolution on the fast mode point cloud. Here we are in the new meshing software, which is called Star Vision, and this is actually the second scan I did of the car. The first one had the overlap at the hood of about two to three inches. Here you can see in the second scan that the wraparound tracking did much, much better in this very minimal overlap. Can't see where there's a little bit of tracking issues at the gloss black of the pillars as well as the mirror. But overall for spending about 20 minutes to capture that is really, really well. So within this meshing software, we can go and delete some of the point cloud, clean it up a bit, get rid of any excess data. And here we're gonna to try to mesh it at the highest resolution possible, which is 0.5 millimeters. Set the mesh optimization to low. And it does say that it's gonna take about 59 minutes to process. I don't believe that. And here about three hours later, we have an unexpected result. Since this isn't exactly what we want, we're gonna change the resolution to one millimeter with a higher level of refinement. And this is a bit better. Really what this highlights here is how good the onboard meshing is. This remesh took about 45 minutes, which is about three times as long as the onboard mesh, which we brought back into view here. And unless you're aligning multiple scans, at this point I don't really see any need to do any additional post-processing on the PC. The Einstar really does well with medium sized parts like this front cover or this water pump. But when you get to smaller parts like this oil filter adapter, then it starts to struggle a little bit. And this was gonna be a really good test for the Vega to see how it does on a part of this scale. Has a lot of features and geometry. So let's check that one out. So to scan this thing, we're gonna put it on a plastic takeout container. The scanner is not gonna be able to pick that up very well, and it's gonna work out as a good platform. The boot time on this thing is a little bit long, but at the end of the day, it's a lot faster than plugging the Einstar into the laptop, getting all the cables set up, so it's not really too big of an inconvenience. It will go to a blank white screen and then a slightly darker screen before it turns on fully, so don't panic and think that it's locked up. It just takes a second to boot. All right, so let's get this thing aimed at our part where we are in HD mode. So within HD mode, there is a relatively small window in which you can work. And this is gonna do much better setup on a tripod. I did do a test scan as a handheld and it started to pick up a little bit of extraneous noise. And I found that having it on a tripod and then rotating the part 
it does really well for the smaller stuff and I think that's probably inherent on any 3D scanner. But even doing that with a legacy Einstar, it would really start to struggle on the smaller parts like this. So let's get this scan going and see what sort of detail we end up with. We're just gonna slowly rotate the part around. There's no need to rush and everything will eventually come into the field of view. And then once we make a couple turns, we're gonna reposition the part. So now what we're gonna do is flip this around. And click on mesh. Let's do a mesh optimization like that and see what that gets us. Here's the resulting mesh overall. I'm really happy with this. Uh, there are still some voids. Uh, I probably could have spent a little bit more time on this, but I really just wanted to try to scan a part that normally would have given me a big headache on the previous Einstar model and I'm actually really surprised about how well and how quickly this scanned, and particularly as rotating it and going around corners and edges that it didn't lose tracking at all, which is really, really impressive. I gotta say this is a marked improvement on scanning smaller items over the previous Einstar model. Next up, we're gonna hop inside my i8 to scan a portion of the dash. I am going to create a custom housing to fit an LCD screen that's going to display engine vitals off of CAN bus from my standalone ECU and the car. We need a 3D scan in order to get the contours of the mounting for that screen housing correct and have it flow seamlessly into the dash. I think that'll be good. One thing that I did find a little bit irritating is that there is a gap in the scanning range between the HD and the fast mode. The HD mode will scan up to 250 millimeters away from the object. The fast mode wants to be at least 350 millimeters away. And when we're trying to scan this area behind the dash with the angle of the windshield, that does make it a little bit more difficult. The speed at which I was able to scan the interior was pretty impressive. Uh, let's see what the resulting mesh looks like and we'll go from there. I did scan this in texture align mode. So you can see it captured the colors and whatnot. This is relatively useless for my purposes, but it does help with the tracking alignment. Let's delete that. And we don't need anything over here. All right, so I think that gives us the area that we need. We'll hit complete. Modifying your point cloud and deleting data actually takes longer than the actual meshing. That was kind of interesting. I will say that aside from the minor annoyance of having to be 350 millimeters away from the object that you're scanning, the fact that I am not tethered to any cables and I don't have to set the laptop down anywhere, I have full freedom of movement is actually really, really nice. I didn't think that I would like a standalone this much, but I definitely see the value and appeal in this type of device now. Here we're back in Star Vision, and in this case, we need to align two scans because I wasn't able to get a complete capture. We'll try the automatic scan align mode first, which I never really had any good luck for in the XStar software, and that remains consistent here. So we'll just do a manual indication where you select three points at approximate locations in the point cloud that should line up. It uses those to get in the ballpark and then it will do a much better job of aligning the mesh thereafter. Here we have our aligned point cloud and now we're gonna go remesh it. We're just gonna use the suggested settings. And here's the final result. That mesh looks a little bit too melty for my liking, so we're gonna reduce the mesh optimization a little bit. That's looking a little bit better. And let's turn it all the way down.
that's going to leave us with the best detail that we need to create a form for our LCD screen housing. One thing to also keep in mind about any of these scans is that my approach to 3D scanning is to get the minimum amount of data that I need to create a part as fast as possible. So I don't want to spend my entire day 3D scanning, chasing perfection, trying to have the perfect digital representation of the part. I just want to have enough data off that part that I can design what I need to and then move on. That brings us to the question, is the Vega better than the Einstar? And that really depends on what you're trying to scan. If you're focused on scanning smaller things that fit in the palm of your hand, then it is absolutely gonna scan easier and faster than the previous model of the Einstar. Also, if you're gonna be scanning a large part like a car body, it's gonna be significantly easier than trying to set up a project with multiple scans that you have to align. You can do it all in one shot, and you also don't need a very powerful laptop to run the scanner. It was pretty amazing to be able to mesh an entire car scan on the device in a matter of about 10, 15 minutes, compared to something that would have been multiple hours on an even fairly decent laptop. Although I did find that the gap in the depth of field between the fast mode and the HD mode did make it quite difficult and awkward to scan the medium-sized objects that the previous model Einstar would really excel at. I don't know if this was done intentionally to bookend the performance of the previous model Einstar with the Vega, but I would ideally like to downsize to a single 3D scanner, but at the end of the day it is a tool, and a tool that does everything doesn't necessarily do anything well, so I am perfectly fine with having two tools in the box. So which scanner should you buy? It really depends on what your use case is and what your budget is. If you're looking to just get involved in 3D scanning, you want to do some car parts, and you want something that's a really good bang for the buck, then the previous model Einstar is probably still going to be my recommendation. It's a great price point, it performs extremely well, and as long as you have a laptop to support it, then you're going to be in really good shape. If you're primarily going to be scanning really small parts or larger things like cars, then the Vega definitely gets my vote. Keep in mind I've only had the scanner for about three days, but I've been really impressed so far with the speed and ease of which I've been able to capture scan data that would be absolutely usable for my use case of reverse engineering things into CAD and designing car parts. I'm definitely looking forward to spending some more time with the scanner. I plan on doing a variety of additional parts as well as a long-term review at some point in the future. But for now, check out the links in the description to some of the sample scans that we did in this video. In the next episodes, we're going to get back to designing parts to support my rotary swapped BMW i8. We'll see you next time.